Hi everybody, I'm going to carry on with uh, reading our story clockwork. Um, in the book there are some sort of funny extra bits, some illustrations and things, so I'll try and show those on the camera when we come to them. Um, I hope you enjoyed the preface. This is now part one. Off we go. Once upon a time, when time ran by clockwork, a strange event took place in a little German town. Actually, it was a series of events, all fitting together like the different parts of a clock. And although each person saw a different part, no one saw the whole of it. But here it is, as well as I can tell it. It began on a winter's evening when the townsfolk were gathering in the White Horse Tavern. The snow was blowing down the mountains and the wind was making the bells shift restlessly in the church tower. The windows were steamed up. The stove was blazing brightly. Putsy, the old black cat, was snoozing on the hearth and the air was full of rich smells of sausage and sauerkraut, of tobacco and beer. Gretel, the little barmaid, the landlord's daughter, was hurrying to and fro with foaming mugs and steaming plates. The door opened and fat white flakes of snow swirled in to faint away into water as they met the heat of the parlour. The incomers, Herr Ringelman, the clockmaker, and his apprentice, Carl, stamped their boots and shook the snow off their great coats. It's Herr Ringelman, said the burgomaster. Well, old friend, come and drink some beer with me and a mug for young, what's his name, your apprentice? Carl, the apprentice, nodded his thanks and went to sit by himself in a corner. His expression was dark and gloomy. What's the matter with young thingamy Bob? said the burgomaster. He looks as if he's swallowed a thundercloud. Oh, I shouldn't worry, said the old clockmaker, sitting down at the table with his friends. He's anxious about tomorrow. His apprenticeship is coming to an end, you see. Ah, oh, of course, said the burgomaster. It was the custom that when a clockmaker's apprentice finished his period of service, he made a new figure for the great clock of Glockenheim. So we're to have a new piece of clockwork in the tower tomorrow. Well, I look forward to seeing it tomorrow. I remember when my apprenticeship came to an end, said Herr Ringelman. I couldn't sleep for thinking about what would happen when my figure came out of the clock. Supposing I hadn't counted the cogs properly, supposing the spring was too stiff, supposing, oh, a thousand things go through your mind. It's a heavy responsibility. Maybe so, but I've never seen the lad look so gloomy before, said someone else, and he's not a cheerful fellow at the best of times. And it seemed to the other drinkers that Herr Ringelman himself was a little downhearted, but he raised his mug with the rest of them and changed the conversation to another topic. I hear young Fritz, the novelist, is going to read us his new story tonight, he said. So I believe, said the burgomaster. I hope it's not as terrifying as the last one he read to us. Do you know, I woke three times that night and found my hair on end just thinking about it. I don't know if it's more frightening hearing them in the parlour or reading them later on your own, said someone else. It's worse on your own, believe me, said another. You can feel the ghostly fingers creeping up your spine. And even when you know what's going to happen next, you can't help jumping when it does.